Hey bookmarks and bookworms, welcome back to the channel. It's Booker Prize season baby and today I'm telling you about seven novels from debut authors who could win the Booker 2024. Now I have a sneaky suspicion along with Scott Averett Gunpowder Fiction and Plot and Bob from Bob the Booker that Booker 2024 is going to be laden with well-established prize-winning authors because there are just so many of them eligible this year they're all it's like the heavyweights are all vying for this year's title of book 2024 but i really have this this kind of burgeoning little hope as well that we get some debut novelists um i have a, a few reasons why this is the main one is because yi yun lee is a judge on this year's panel and so she is a creative writing professor at Princeton University. She is always therefore seeing young upcoming writers potentially who have no spotlight being shone on them at all. She knows the value of prizes firsthand as she won the Penn Award when she was a, a very new, relatively obscure author. Um, and so I feel like will she, will this woman who is around a lot of young writers and is constantly admiring and looking at the work of young writers will she want to give them the the leg up in the literary world that she has been given herself so that is my one kind of uh shoe in if you like on the judging panel as to why i think we could get a couple of debut novelists this year um we have had lists in the past where booker has gone completely into obscurity and given us some great books karen jennings the island comes to mind um as does a passage north uh, by anuk arad pragasam um those were both books that came out of left field and no one had heard of really and read them because of the booker and absolutely were loved by people when we read them so they could have and i'm kind of hoping for more of an obscure year but as there are just so many I think uh, Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot did a brilliant video talking about 163 eligible titles this year. So many of them were coming from well-established authors, um, the likes of uh, Chigozi Obioma, uh, Percival Everett, uh, Ali Smith even. So to say there is going to be quite a crowded eligibility pile of books on this year's judging panel table is an understatement i think so looking at interviews that both yi Yun lee and head judge edmund duval have done um in the past they they both also look for books that are either subversive in some way or are genre mold breaking in some way and so there are a few books on this list that i'm about to share with you today that also fit that criteria um because, I, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm trying to look at the judges to see what they would pick, because this is not some obscure entity who's picking us 13 books. These are five people, and these people are going to come with their own preferences, their own their own likes, dislikes, their own history of reading, and uh, what they, the forms of reading and writing that they enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into the first debut novel. So first up we have Hyper by Agri Ismail. This is in the contemporary autofiction genre and this follows the three children of Rafiq Kermanj as he basically is forced to flee from Tehran to London after founding the Kurdish Communist Party. His only daughter flees into an unhappy marriage in Baghdad. His eldest son stays in London to pursue a career in finance, whilst his youngest son kind of surrounds himself in the digital world, creating trading algorithms that ultimately result in his downfall. It says here, at once a love letter to the system's novel, a subversion of the family saga, Hyper uses the unsettled nature of the Kurdish diaspora to capture the dislocations of life under capitalism. So this is tapping into that um, subversive um, genre breaking in some way aspect that both Yi Young Lee and Edmund Duval have claim to enjoy and and want to see so moving on to the next book this is manny and the baby by varadiso this author is already being called one to watch um being named stylist best new fiction of 2024 and included in the net galley 2024 hot list um so could this be the debut dark horse that makes it onto this list of <laughs> book of 2024 with all of these huge names that we all know and potentially love this novel is also character-driven historical fiction, which in years past has been very well represented as a genre uh, on booker lists. And so 
this could also be Booker sticking to type in some way as well. Going between two timelines, this is about what it means to be black in Britain, um, following a 2012 timeline and also a 1936 timeline. Well researched and poetic, this could be a real win for the judges who really love well written historical fiction, like for example Sarah Collins, who's a judge on this year's panel, who writes historical fiction herself. Next up I've chosen to highlight Colin Barrett's This is Wild Houses and I have chosen this because many of the judges, I think three out of the five judges, ha are all on record in interviews saying they like poetry and they like the short story form. Colin Barrett is already a very well regarded short story writer and so in his first dive into the novel, will he take his, his um, previous writing style and kind of have elements and influence a, a long form novel. This is definitely a novel, it's therefore definitely Booker eligible, but what I mean is will he take his writing experience uh, in the short story form, which presumably he feels very comfortable and confident in, and weave in elements of that to this debut novel, those elements that will appeal to the judges who are already saying we like poetry, we like the short story form. It is also Irish fiction, which we all know also gets a lot of prize attention, especially Booker Prize attention. Barrett has already been receiving some attention for this book. The Observer have put him onto their Best Debut Novelist list for 2024, and Wild Houses has also received praise from a bunch of Booker nominated authors, uh, such as Brandon Taylor, Douglas Stewart, Anne Enright, Kevin Barry and Elaine Feely. So if quality recognises quality, this could be a good indication that we'll be seeing this book next month. The general gist um, to Colin Barrett's plot this time is that this is centering around the theme of small town violence as a simmering feud between the local drug dealers and the local police kind of boils over. Next up I've chosen Thunderhead by Miranda Darling. This is 160 pages long so I'm fairly confident that this is long enough to clear the Booker eligibility uh, word count and as I've said a big reason as to why I gave this a spot on this very small list of seven debut novels is because it is a short short novel. A bunch of judges who like short form fiction are probably going to be more likely to put this on the list than a giant seven, eight hundred page epic. Now that I've said that, we're all going to be reading a tome on the long list this year, so I apologise in advance for saying that. <laughs> this novel has also been given that, that label of uh, quirky genre bending, which again is another buzzword that the judges themselves have can be quoted as saying they like, so I'm holding on to that and I'm running with it. Um, this is a black comedy set in suburbia about one woman's struggle to be free. On the outside Winona is a seemingly unremarkable young mother, unobtrusive, quietly going about her tasks, but within is a vivid, chaotic self, teeming with voices and a mind both wild and precise. So really who knows if this book is going to get onto the list, who knows if any of these books are going to go onto the list, but um, yeah, I hope I've chosen some ones here that maybe sound appealing to you regardless. I know right now in my reading, um, I am uh, sampling and reading in full some of the books that I have found from the eligibility list on Goodreads, which is my go-to resource for all things Booker related. Um, so I highly recommend you check that out, look at the uh, summaries and blurbs yourself and maybe get a head start, because that is what I'm doing. Um, speaking of that, this next book that I'm about to talk to you is one of the samples and novels that I've read in full. This is Julius Taranto's How I Won the Nobel Prize. Great cover, first of all, I really loved the cover, and I also loved the blurb of this. This is about a grad student who follows her disgraced mentor to an island of disgraced university uh, not dropouts, but university academics, let's say. And so this is very much a satire, it's very funny, around this idea of um, college cancel culture, right? Because all of these uh, disgraced academics, be they professors or students, all end up on this on this island together and basically have a great time. They, they have, um, they're obviously all incredibly intelligent, they're producing some amazing uh, research and um, uh, to the point where you know you have the other other uh, 
campuses who are on the mainland going oh we want to go and work there because clearly there's a lot of of research uh, this is this is where the, the finger is on the pulse if you like of academic research we want to go there but obviously they can't because this is some sort of punishment right? this isn't meant to be some alluring island um and yet it that is inevitably what what has happened no one wants to stay in these sort of um left-wing institutes anymore um and so this young grad student has gone along following her mentor to do some research but it's also pulling into question her personal life her marriage that sort of thing so um it's a really great read it's a quick read um it's an interesting read um it really flows it has a nice flow to it um it does kind of drop off towards the end. It's definitely a debut novel in that it has a couple of those pitfalls going on. Um, but who knows? It could be that the the timeliness of this novel, the um, the charm of this novel really works on the judges because it certainly worked on me. As with many book of books, this has already had a very Marmite reception. If you look at the Goodreads reviews, there are some people who are one star and there are some people who are five star and there's not really a lot of in between, which I personally think only strengthens its validity as a Booker Prize nominated book, because I feel like that is basically Booker Catnip. They, they love a divisive book. They love a book that is hated by some and loved by others. Prophet Song being a classic example of that from last year's list. How to Build a Boat by Elaine Feeney being another classic example just from the list just gone let alone previous years and previous examples of that so uh, yeah this could really be on there in a, in a serious serious way <laughs> The next debut novel I'm going to talk about is Shanghai Landers by Julie Min. This is a series of interconnected vignette style short stories about the lives of the cosmopolitan super rich in Shanghai. There are two deliberate choices that distinguish this novel. The first is that it starts in 2040 and the second being that the, the chapters are in reverse chronological order ending in 2014. My thought process in in highlighting that being that if we're going for something a little bit different if we are the book of judges um only slightly different because it's not you know groundbreaking to do a reverse uh timeline but it could be something that makes it slightly different um as well as obviously this is young chinese um author representation female author representation um which obviously is going to appeal to very particular judges on the Booker judging panel this year. So that could be a motivating factor. Who knows? Lastly, I'm talking about Great Expectations by Vincent Cunningham. This is already a highly anticipated debut release by one of the New Yorker's rising stars. So this book and this author may very well explode onto the scene this year on the Booker, catapulting him to a, a, a name that we all recognise um, in the next coming years. Um, because this is ultimately a book about David's 18 month long job um, working on the senator's presidential campaign. Along the way, David meets a series of people um, discussing a myriad of questions around race, history, fatherhood, art and religion all of which forced David to confront his, his own past and look at his own life anew to come to terms with his identity as a young black man and father in the US. This is said to be memoir-esque, so it could be sort of genre bending slash genre breaking if we're doing memoir-esque fiction, but again, I may, be, I may be stretching that one slightly, it's not quite genre breaking, but certainly coming of age narratives are no stranger to the book along list, as well as this thematically feeling very booker appropriate. Um, so I have potentially saved Great Expectations for last on this list, and it could be the one that is most likely to get onto the list. So those are my thoughts on just a few of the eligible debut novels for this year's Booker. Do let me know in the comments uh, which ones you've heard of, which ones you want to read, which ones you definitely don't want to read. Let, leave me down in the comments any debut novels that are on your radar that you've checked out that are eligible for the Booker because I obviously need to, to read and research more. Um, so yeah, help me out and, and leave those in the comments down below for me to go and check out myself and obviously for all the other viewers scrolling through the comments who want more debut fiction recommendations. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel, I'll be putting out book of content 
all throughout the summer um so stay tuned for that and i'll see you very soon guys thank you for watching today's video have a nice day bye guys